This week's Torah portion of Parshat Vayigash tells about the reunification of Yosef with his brothers, particularly with the youngest brother, Binyamin, his next of kin. When Yosef sees Binyamin, we all know that the Torah says, Vayipol Yosef al tzavarei achiv. Yosef falls on the necks of his brother Binyamin. And obviously the question is, why is it plural? Everyone has only one neck. And then it says, V'chein Binyamin nafal al tzavar Yosef. Binyamin fell on the neck of Yosef. One neck, which is appropriate grammatically. What is going on here? Rashi explains, as all of us are familiar with, that Yosef fell on the necks of Binyamin. He saw a vision of two, two Batei HaMikdash, two temples in Jerusalem that would be destroyed and the portion of Binyamin. And as such, Yosef was crying over the two Batei HaMikdash that were destroyed in the portion of Binyamin that he would see in the future. Binyamin, on the other hand, was crying on the neck one of Yosef, referring to the one Mishkan, the tabernacle, that sat in the portion of Yosef in Shiloh. And he was crying over that. Why was Yosef crying over the portion of Binyamin when Yosef could have cried over Shiloh, which was happening, which was destroyed in his own portion? And in turn, why was Binyamin crying over the portion of Yosef when in turn he could actually be crying about the two Batei Amikdash that he lost in his own portion? One of the explanations is, as we approach tomorrow, Asara Betevet, is that the Beit HaMikdash, according to one opinion in the Gemara and the Talmud, was destroyed because, as we all know, of Sinat Chinam, unwarranted hatred, a lack of tolerance, a lack of love, a lack of compassion from one brother to another. And so it's quite appropriate. Yosef did not cry over what would happen in his portion, the destruction of the tabernacle, but rather he cried over what would happen in his brother's portion. He demonstrated care and compassion and empathy and sensitivity in the fact that his brother, Binyamin, would be losing both temples in his portion. And in turn, Binyamin demonstrated sensitivity and compassion and feelings towards his brother, Yosef, by crying over what would happen to Yosef's portion and not his own. Chazal, in Masechet Avot, in Ethics of Our Fathers, explained that what we call this in Perik Vav, in the sixth Perik, we call this Nosei Be'ol Chavero, someone who carries the burden of someone else. I feel the burden of someone else. I feel the heaviness, the difficulties, the obstructions that they might be experiencing in their lives, and it pains me, so much so that I cry for them over what's happening to them, even though I myself might be experiencing problems as well. This is the compassion that Chazal want us to have, to understand. And this is really quite appropriate as we approach this week's Torah portion and tomorrow, which is Asara Betevet, the beginning of the destruction or what marks the destruction of Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. Why? Because we were not passionate, understanding, empathetic to one another enough. From here we learn the importance of Nosei Ba'ol Chavero. I indeed am concerned for what's going on in someone else's life, sometimes even more, and it supersedes what's going on in my own. I feel your pain more than I feel what's going on in my own. A friend of mine, very close friend of mine, has a son who got injured this past week in the war. And I went to, and I'm not saying this to tout my own greatness, not at all. I'm saying this so that this is understood. I went to visit him in the hospital. When I came out and was walking with his mother, exiting the room, I just burst out into tears. And obviously there were visions and thoughts that I had regarding our loss of a child, Gila, and chas v'chalila, God forbid, what, could, what they could have experienced in losing a child as well. That's no say ba'ol chavero. You feel the pain and... It doesn't mean that I have greatness because I only feel the pain because I feel it. I know it. I know what it's like to have felt it. God forbid no one else should have to. But someone who has bared that burden, someone who has carried that burden, knows what that pain feels like and does not want anyone else to feel that pain either. These are, or this is the bond that Yosef and Benjamin had. And it would be the bond that would rectify and solidify and overcome the hatred that existed originally between Joseph and his brothers. It would once again reunite them, reunificate them, and as a result of that, 
re or be reintroduced the reconstruction of the Jewish people. So it should be with us. This war is causing unity, but the unity that we have to have as a result of this war is not only during wartime, it's after the war is over. We have to carry that no say ol chavero. There will be a lot of people who will have a lot of burdens, a lot of feelings, a lot of hardships that they will feel as a result of what we have all experienced here in Eretz Yisrael. We should remember to take this lesson with us and to hug someone and cry over what's going on in their per- portion and not only what's going on in our own. This is what the Torah comes to remind us. It is the Parsha way, it is the Torah way, it is the Jewish way. And it always will remain the Gila way. When someone is dealing with a mental health struggle, we need to understand and try our best to put ourselves in their place, to understand what they're going through. That is what's required with someone. And that sensitivity, that compassion, can really help that person overcome almost any obstruction that they may be experiencing personally. This is the Gila Way. Shabbat.